Howdy music fans, thanks so much for joining me today for my Bob Dylan video. Everybody else is doing one, so I figured I should do one. I've been a big Dylan fan for all my life, certainly since high school, early high school. And I uh, used to have a lot of his stuff on cassette. Um, I might have had vinyl of his too. I think I do have some vinyl, but now I've got a lot of stuff on CD. And of all the artists I've seen the most, uh, uh, Joan Jett aside, uh, he is up there at the top. He's up there. I've seen him eight or nine times uh, in concert and been very lucky in that regard. I'm not going to do bootlegs except for a couple select things I picked out. Um, maybe down the road I'll do some a bootleg Dylan video. There's just too much. And I'm not going to do DVDs either. There's just too much. Um, so I'm just going to get started. CDs. I'm going to try and go as chronologically as I can. Bob Dylan in concert at Brandeis uh, University in 1963. And that's just a little acoustic, uh, what's it, a seven song little thing. And it's just him on guitar and harmonica. And it's good. His first album, I love. I thought it was fantastic. Again, uh, his first four albums are just him, guitar, and harmonica, and uh, some great originals and some great covers. And he really brings his own, brings himself to his covers on here. This might be House of the Rising Sun on here. Yeah, that's very different. Baby, Let Me Follow You Down, an Eric Von Schmidt song. Um, See That My Grave Is Kept Clean. That's probably an old, uh, probably a traditional or something. I'm not going to look in here, but. Anyway, I don't have these on Digipack. I think they have been released. I have the old uh, jewel cases. And his second album, The Freewheelin' Bob Dylan, of course, is one of everybody's favorites because it has Blown in the Wind, Girl from the North Country, uh, Masters of War is on this. But there's a lot of other great stuff on it, too. I Shall Be Free, Honey, Let Me Just One More Chance, or Honey, Just Allow Me One More Chance, Bob Dylan's Blues, A Hard Rain, Don't Think Twice. Those are, of course, big ones. Um, this one, yeah, great, great record. His finger picking is very underrated as well. I just got an American Songwriter magazine because Elizabeth Cotton was on the cover, and it uh, has has Dylan in there too as as a a finger picker that they look at and study. And he certainly was very underrated. Uh, another side of Bill, Bob Dylan, another great um, you know acoustic record. The only ones that really people really heard on here were my back pages and Ain't Me Babe and. Uh, to Ramona, maybe. Chimes of Freedom, but the whole thing, all I really want to do, Spanish Harlem Incident, and Black, uh, oh, Motorcycle Nightmare is great. Um, a lot of great stuff, a lot of fun, goofy stuff, too. Not a lot, but some fun, goofy stuff. And his last one, just him doing acoustic in the early 60s, The Times They Are Chained, which, of course, has that. And With God on Our Side is another one that people know, but there's, again, some great songs in here. When the Ship Comes In, Boots of Spanish Leather is one people know. One Too Many Mornings people know a little bit, but there's a lot of great stuff on here. The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll. So, all right, now he goes electric or part electric. I'm not sure if this is com in the correct order, but this one, Highway 61, of course, has like a Rolling Stone, and that was huge, and Desolation Row is probably, probably my favorite on this. Um, just like Tom Thumb's Blues, I like a lot also. It takes a lot to laugh. A Train to Cry, I love that song. A lot of great stuff on here. Ballad of a Thin Man, I kind of go, I get, I'm lukewarm on. I like it, I don't like it, I go back and forth. Um, Bring It All Back Home. This one is, is the one that's acoustic on one side and electric on the other, and boy, it's fantastic. Maggie's Farm, She Belongs to Me, Love Minus Zero, No, no Limit. Those are all ones that people know. But Bob Dylan's 115th Dream, Really great song. It's all over now. Uh, it's all over now, Baby Blue. Of course, everybody knows that. It's all right, Mom. Only Bleeding Gates of Eden. Mr. Tambourine Man. Everybody knows that. But man, there are some other excellent songs on here that I just, uh, yeah, it's amazing how what a writer he was. When he's been asked, you know, about writing those songs, he says, "I don't know who wrote those songs. I didn't do it. I could never have done that," <laughs> which is is funny. And I can see why he thinks that. You know, it was just taken over by some otherworldly force that was just his he was writing just out of this world songs blonde on blonde uh everybody loves this one that thin wild mercury sound i like it it's not my for me for, for me it's not his opus like a lot of people think like this is one of the greatest records of all time 
and it is great. I do like it, but that thin weld mercury sound just that needs some more bass for me. <laughs> it needs a little more thickening up, but I do like it a lot. There's some great songs. Visions of Johanna, of course, is fantastic. Um, Pledging My Time is great, and uh, one of us sooner or later, one of us must know that might be that's one of my favorites. Absolutely, Sweet Marie is one of my favorites off of this too. And my most likely, you go your way and I go mine. And Stuck Inside a Mobile with the Memphis Blues again. A lot of great songs on this album. <laughs> All right, then there's uh, Basement Tapes, the original one, and uh, that's a fun one with the band. A lot of great fun stuff on that. And then there's New Morning, which, uh, you know, I like it because I'm, I'm a Bob Dylan fan. It's not his best by any means. It's not even his best of that era, in my opinion, but it is good. I do like it. Um, and this has, what does this have that people know? If not for you, that's the one that people might have heard, yeah. But then we get to, well, maybe these are out of order. Okay, we'll go. This might be out of order. John Wesley Harding. Uh, very stripped down acoustic record before Blood on the Tracks, but that in that vein, the songs aren't as good. Um, some people would disagree. There are some great songs on here. I, I think, think it's a little lackluster, but when I listen to it, I like it. I don't love it, but it is a good record, and they are good songs. Uh, Drifter's Escape is one that the face is covered with Rod Stewart and they rock it up and he rocks it up in concert So that's good. And I do like it more than Nashville Skyline um, Not one of my favorites girl from the North Country is good. I don't like his voice on this. I don't like his smooth Croony type voice that everybody else loves. Lay Lady Lay. No, thanks <laughs> um, I threw it all away is great to be alone with you is great. There are some good ones tonight I'll be staying here with you is great to um, yeah, I don't like all of it. To me, it's some throwaway on this, and it's like a 29-minute record or something. But there are some wonderful songs that came off of that. All right, now we're getting into some real nitty-gritty here. Planet Waves has got to be one of his best records that is not known by most people. Forever Young is the only song that really came out of this. But it has You, Angel, You, and On a Night Like This. On a Night Like This, people might know. Going, Going, Gone, Tough Mama. This is, this is with the band also, and it is just a spectacular record, I think. Very solid. Very solid. Speaking of solid, then we get to one of his great opuses, Blow in the Tracks, with uh, Simple Twist of Fate and Tangled Up in Blue and Idiot Wind. And this one, just Meet Me in the Morning. I used to play, as a kid, I played Lily Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts, and I had it memorized. It's got... I don't know how many verses, 16 or something, but it's a fun song. Pretty upbeat, too. Uh, Desire is, you know, the follow-up to Blood in the Tracks, which is a, a, a fantastic follow-up. I like it a lot. I don't like it as much. Um, it's a little slower. I love Hurricane, and I, I mean, I like all the songs on it, honestly. Um, I just don't get psyched to hear them, except for Black Diamond Bay, Romance in Durango, and Hurricane. I like those because they're the more upbeat ones. But I do like the entire record. The old songs are good. Senor is covered by a lot of people, and that's a great song. Uh, Hard Rain. This is one of his first uh, live albums uh, besides the uh, Before the Flood. And this is pretty good, too. This is uh, 74, 75, 76, something like that. I'm not sure when this is, but it's a good live album. Um, oh, speaking of Before the Flood. Is, oh, no, this is not Before the Flood. This is live at Budokan in 78. And this, you know, a lot of people won't like this. As a kid, I loved it. I thought it was great. It has flute in it, a lot of flute in it, which is kind of weird. Um, but it is really, it's a rock and rock and album, and they're great performances, and uh, it's a great full band. Um, yeah, I thought, I think it's a really great album. Slow Train Coming. Now we're getting into his religious material, which a lot of people probably shy away from, but they are very solid albums. The production is good. The songwriting is excellent, and the musicianship is great, and his singing is wonderful. And there's some really good songs on here, like "Precious Angel" and "I Believe in You." Um, it's not all, you know, it's and it's not all shoving it down your throat kind of religion stuff. Some of it is, but you know, this is a really solid record in my opinion. Uh, "Shot of Love," another one, this is his second one, and the uh, religious uh, little group there, and has Lenny Bruce on it. Every Grain of Sand, I mean, come on, that's one of his greatest songs ever. Um, this is just a wonderful album in general. Heart of Mine is really good. And then, do, are those the only ones I have? Boy, I guess I don't have Saved, um, which is a really good one. I've got to get that now. I probably, yeah, there's some that are missing, but I'm not sure what they are. Empire Burlesque, 
Um, the production's a little 80s-ish because it's in the 80s, a little cheesy, but it has some good songs on it. Clean Cut Kid and Trust Yourself, uh, When the Night Comes Falling from the Sky, Something Bur Something's Burning Baby, Dark Eyes. Um, there are some good songs on here. And uh, when I saw him, he was touring this with the, with the Dead and Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and they played a bunch of songs off of that. Then Street Legal. This one is one that gets lost in the shuffle and is really um, underrated. In my opinion, it's one of his most solid records. Definitely his most solid later records. Um, Changing of the Guards. I love that song. A New Pony, No Time to Think, Baby Stop Crying, Is Your Love in Vain. Um, this has Senor on it also. Wait a minute. Is this Senor was not on? I thought Senor was on Desire. Am I goofy? Maybe I'm goofy. Uh, there's, I mean, there, there's no question that in that, but maybe it applies here. Let's see. I thought Senor was on here. No, Isis is what I get mixed up with Senor. My fault entirely. So Senor is the one that came, you know, the big one that came out of this that people know. But um, I, I like every single song on this record. I think it is very solid. A good rock record. Even the slow songs, really solid record. Bob Dylan, Infidels. This is the stuff he did with Mark Knopfler. Um, there's Union Sundown, one of my favorites. That's a really rocking song. And there's another really rocking song on here. I forget what it is. Um, hang on. Uh, no, that's a J.J. Kale song. Let's see. Oh, Neighborhood Bully. Yeah, License to Kill is on this. Joker Man is on this. This is a good album. It's the production's a little bit, you know, 80s. A little cheesy, but not bad. Not terrible. This, I believe, is when he had G.E. Smith in the band, and I didn't like that very much. I liked G.E. Smith just fine, but he just kind of ran roughshod all over Bob's songs, in my opinion, when he toured with him, and he just was like a shredder kind of Mr. Guitar Hero, and I didn't like him as much. Um, I think that this is, has G.E. Smith in the band. Produced by Glenn Johns, though, um, so that's good. And this, Oh, well, no, I'm wrong. There you go. This is one of the ones from... I was wondering that. I was second-guessing myself as I was speaking. This is one of the ones with um, Ian McLaughlin and Mick Taylor. Um, and I think this one doesn't get any credit, you know, but it is a good live album. Mick Taylor and Ian McLaughlin, come on. All right, then we have a cover, uh, a um, <laughs> Down in the Groove, just a burned copy of it, his worst album ever. I used to live with a guy, a friend of mine, who um, made fun of me, and so he, um, he made this album. Because he, he's a Dylan fan also. It has Silvio on it, which he hates and I like a lot. I love Silvio. My band used to play it. Um, then we get into some different kind of stuff that uh, also doesn't get enough of a, a fair shake. And I, I love this album. Good as I've been to you. For me, it's nostalgic. But I, you know, it just is, it's him and proving, again, that he can finger pick, that he can play do great renditions of old traditionals and um, play and sing and, and and play harmonica some beautiful beautiful songs on this and uh, some beautiful renditions Jim Jones is excellent on this um, Black Jack Davey uh, sitting on top of the world um, little Maggie there's just Diamond Joe there's one after the other after the other after the other step it up and go hard times just a wonderful album now, he did try to do the same thing again, and some people, a lot of people probably like this one more, like this one better. It's a little more serious, a little more of a serious tone in the choice of songs. They're more um, darker, they're, and they're more bluesy. This one, as good as I've been to you, is a little more folky and fun. Um, this has World Gone Wrong by Blind Willie McTell, and then it has uh, Ragged and Dirty and Blood in My Eyes by the Mississippi Sheiks, and... So there's some interesting stuff on this. I like both of them a lot. Um, I do like Good As I've Been To You better than World Gone Wrong, but most Dylan fans, I think, like this one better than uh, Good As I've Been To You, but I love both of them. Uh, then we get into his kind of, one of his many comebacks, if people, if you're going to call it that. Oh Mercy um, starts that. Uh, and I think Oh Mercy is a pretty rocking album. It has Ring Them Bells and Man in the Long Black Coat and... Uh, Rear Teardrops, Fall Shooting Star is a fantastic song. Uh, what Good Am I, Disease of Conceit, What Was It You Wanted, Willie Nelson covered that. A lot of great songs on this. I think it's a solid record. And this might be, uh, yeah, I was going to say Daniel Lenoir's first outing with Daniel Lenoir. Okay, then we get into Under the Red Sky. People think this is a little bit of a, di a diversion. It's got some goofier stuff, Cats in the Well, and... I uh, forget what else. Wiggle Wiggle. <laughs> and, but I think it's a solid record. Um, is this Daniel Lenoir again? I'm not sure. But 
Um, I think it's got some good stuff on it, and I do like it personally because uh, Under the Red Sky I think is good. Unbelievable is good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not the greatest album, but it is a good song. I mean, a good album. Sorry, I saw the title TV talking song. Uh, MTV Unplugged. This is great, and so is the outtakes one. Um, the if you can find a copy of the outtakes, the bootleg one, which has got a lot of different songs on it, which is what's nice about it. But this is a wonderful, um, it was a wonderful performance with him and his band. Then the 30th anniversary concert. A friend of mine was actually at this in Madison Square Garden, and of course we all know the stories go along with this. Uh, who came, who was there? You know Neil Young and Eric Clapton and Tom Payton, and Heartbreakers, and uh, the Steve Cropper and and Duck Dunn were the backup band. <laughs> I mean, so many great names in here. Um, so many great people. Stevie Wonder played and. Chrissy Hind, and uh, it just goes on and on. Of course, the band played, and then Dylan put on a hell of a little short set at the very end. Just wonderful. I'm going to back up a little bit because we forgot Self-Portrait, which I'm one of the weirdos that liked Self-Portrait, but I really liked what they did with Self-Portrait, which was this, this little, I got this as a gift. Um, they made it into a two-disc set, and then there's Alive at the Isle of Wight is also part of this set. And let's see, um, oh, and there's, so there's a really nice booklet in here in this set. Yeah, really nice booklet. And then the book, book with all the CDs and um, some, looks like some 45 covers and some of his artwork and other covers and things. And um, so yeah, it's got, it's actually three CDs um, and there's a little promo card. It's actually three CDs. It's it's two with all these great outtakes from um, from uh, Self Portrait, which you know if I'm gonna let, listen to his smooth voice, I said earlier I don't like his smooth voice. It's not as smooth as it is on National Skyline as it is on this. I think this is a little less smooth and just some wonderful stuff on this. I thought he wrote the boxer when I was a kid. He does the boxer on Self Portrait. <laughs> Took yeah, I didn't know at first that uh, that was not one of his. Uh, then these are some, I don't know what these are, some oddballs. This might be some of his theme time radio hour, some burns. Mast and Anonymous was a fun film, and there's the soundtrack, and he, him and his band are on it, and uh, lots of other great acts are on that as well. I'm Not There, another great film that he was in, and about, or about him, or I don't remember. I get them, them, them mixed up. I think, yeah, he was in Mast and Anonymous. He wasn't in this one, but this one's kind of about him and all of his songs, covers. Um, this Bob Dylan's Artist Choice thing, music that matters to him. It's got Ray Price and Pee Wee Creighton and Junior Wells and uh, Charlie Jordan, a lot of great folks, Junior Parker, Billie Holiday. And then we've got another comeback for him, Time Out of Mind, what can you say? This album is stellar. I think the only album, the only song that didn't do it for me on this was Till I Till I Fell in Love With You, was that the one? And Make You Feel My Love. No, it was Make You Feel My Love was the only one that really didn't do it for me. This whole album is just incredible. And I think this is another Daniel Lenoir production. Yep. And you can hear it. You can really hear the, the swampy, gritty, kind of dirty sounds in there. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And, and around late, a little later, he started working with Willie Nelson and getting some wonderful stuff out of Willie Nelson on that Teatro album. And, then comes Love and Theft, and another one, just pure solid, solid, great record. He mixes it up here with styles, some rockabilly, some blues, some swingy kind of jazzy type stuff, and a lot of rock and roll, and some singer songwriter -y, but just a very solid album. And then Modern Times, this one, I think, it seemed like he kind of did a lot of a lot of thievery in his lyrics in this one, but I think it's a wonderful album. I love Thunder on the Mountain, and I like the whole thing, as far as I recall. Rolling and Tumbling, he might credit himself on that, and of course that's an old Muddy Waters tune, or somebody tune. Um, anyway, this has a bonus DVD also with some things on it as well, so Modern Times, another one. And then he just keeps cranking them out, Together Through Life. This is a deluxe version with a big fat booklet in it. And uh, some other stuff. Oh, no, not a book, but this one has a, a The Lost Interview. So it's a, a CD or DVD interview. DVD interview and a sticker. And um, what else is in here? A poster. It's just the cover of the CD. 
Uh, but this one, what I loved about it was, um, first of all, the songs, uh, as, as, as usual, were wonderful. I thought it was great songwriting. But I also liked um, that there's an, an accordion on this, which is pretty new for him. Um, oh, and there's one CD from Radio Time, his Radio Time Theme Hour, whatever you call it, uh, Theme Time Radio Hour. Um, yeah, there's an accordion on this record throughout uh, the whole thing uh, on, on pretty much every song, I believe. And the songs are just good. You know, they, he just continues in this vein. This is, you know, like a golden run for him, these four discs all in a row, in my opinion, of just really solid material. Um, yeah. Uh, and then uh, this is just a compilation I made. And then we get into, then there's Tempest. Oh, so i got to get a new case for that. And Tempest is another one that's good. Uh, I don't think it's as good as the other four, but it is very good. I do like it. And then the new basement tapes, Lost on the River. These are lots of people doing um, songs that Bob Dylan never finished, I guess, never recorded, but wrote and wrote, wrote parts of or wrote all of. Now we get into the bootleg series, the official bootleg series. This, to me, is the crown jewel of the bootleg series. The three CD set has this is volumes one through three, the first one he released. And the reason being, it, it just has an immense amount of unreleased songs that we've never heard before until now. There's definitely songs we've heard that are, there's new versions, but there's a lot of material that's just never been released until then. And it comes with a, a booklet. I don't, um, ah, the booklet's not in there, but I believe I have the booklet. Okay, then we keep, oh, there's the booklet. <laughs> I thought I had the booklet. <laughs> there's the booklet. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's it. So that belongs in there. I think I had the booklet before I had the set, actually, or something. Oh, no, it doesn't fit in there. Maybe I had the booklet from a different version of this set. Anyway, um, Bob Dylan Live, Volume 4, um, 1966, the Royal Albert Hall Concerts. These are good. I like them. I'm not a, as big a fan as everybody else of these, but I do like them a lot. They are excellent. Um, it's an excellent show. I'm trying to make sure I get all this stuff, put it back in order. And then they came out with this, the real Royal Albert Hall concert. And I don't know if I've ever even gotten around to listening to this yet. I bought it because it was cheap, and I'll get to it when I get to it. Now, the Rolling Thunder review, Volume 5, 75. This is also great. These all come with, uh, these are all double CDs with nice booklets, unless there are more CDs, or, or there's one one CD, I think. And some of them, a lot of them have been um, also um, been expanded in big deluxe box sets. I don't have any of those except for the self-portrait. That was a bootleg series. That's number 10. Here's number 6, him playing in the Philharmonic Hall in 64, so just him and his acoustic guitar. Another two-disc set with a nice booklet. Now we get into stuff that I like a little more. The, um, this is Volume 7 of Martin Scorsese. This is the um, soundtrack to No Direction Home. And the reason I like this, again, is because we're getting material that we've never heard before, uh, including, again, outtakes and different versions of things we have heard. But we're getting some stuff we've never heard before, which is what I really like. This is one of my favorites, um, Volume 8, Telltale Signs. This one is really rare and unreleased, 89 to 2006. This collects some stuff that is not anywhere else that's on soundtracks and probably b-sides god knows what but um and it also has um, some great alternate versions of some grittier stuff from the 80s 90s and 2000s uh, yeah 89 to 2006 and some unreleased stuff so very very nice i like that one a lot the whitmark demos i wanted this one and i got it probably as, i think as a gift i asked for it and I, as I recall, I, I wasn't as thrilled with it. Um, it's just a little weak. It's, you know, the, some of the stuff from very early 60s, 62 to 64 acoustic demos and stuff. It's good, but uh, it's not something I'm going to throw on all the time. Now, my, uh, what I got for the basement tapes was just this, the two CD version. Of course, there's a big one, and then there was the, whatever, the roots or tree of something that they did, the bootleg one, before this actually all came out. Um, and then they did the expanded big giant version, but I just got the two CD set, which is a real addition to the other, the original two CD set or two album set. Um, the best of Cutting Edge 65 to 66. I don't remember what I think of this one, but I think I do like this one. This is a lot of outtakes and alternate versions and probably some demos and stuff. 
This is fantastic. Trouble No More. This is from his religious period, but the band was sharp and the performances were incredible and they were tight and just rocking and filled with energy. Really wonderful stuff um, for, in this set. This was another one that was released as a big deluxe box set and I just got the two CD set. This stuff has been floating around forever in bootleg circles, the, the stuff from, um, from um, Butt on the Tracks, so I wasn't too excited about this when it came out. Uh, and this came out also in other sets. I don't know why you need to hear all this stuff and every little nuance and every little uh, take that he ever did. But, you know, there were some pretty big versions of this put out, deluxe versions. I will listen to the actual album before I listen to that. This is the more, one of the, I think the last one at, to this point. The one with Johnny Cash. This one also, a lot of this stuff's been floating around forever. And this is a three-disc set. And it has, um, disc one is... Uh, alternate uh, sessions, versions of a lot of stuff, and then uh, from John Wesley Harding. And then the second disc is him and Johnny Cash, and then Johnny Cash and others like uh, Earl Scruggs, and I forget who else is on here, but some self-portrait stuff. It's a nice set. They're all, it's got, the, you know, the, the discs are each separate and have their own little fold-out, so that's kind of cool. A beautiful picture of him and Johnny from... Uh, the Johnny Cash show, of course, and then the Nashville skyline, you know. This one is a lot of stuff that I'd already heard or had on bootleg version. I didn't really need it, but I'm a Dylan fanatic, so I thought I'm going to get it. And it, just like all the others, you know, it's got a very nice booklet. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not uh, at the top of the list for me for bootlegs series. Telltale Signs and... Um, Trouble No More, and the first three, are, and then the self-portrait, those are probably the top of my list. And this one's been getting a lot of chatting, a lot of talk up lately. Um, Rough and Rowdy Ways, his newest record, which I will have feature, I'll, I'll have in my 2020 year in review. Double CD set, uh, nine songs on the first, and then Murder Most Foul, um, which I still haven't heard. <laughs> but I've heard the whole, the, the rest of this, the other CD twice now, and I like it a lot. It's very, very good. And then I have this Biograph set. I got it because I think I found the CDs somewhere used for cheap. And then I found somebody on eBay that had just the box and book for cheap or something like that. And um, has all of this. It's got a bunch of st stuff in it. I don't know if these are pages with um, comments that he's making on all of the songs. And, you know, the reason to get this set is for Caribbean Wind or Caribbean Wind, however you say it. And um, up to me, those are the big, you know, the big ones that are on no that you can't find anywhere else except for on Biograph. So it's got a nice booklet. Yeah, the, here I found the CDs for the also for ten bucks, and then I think I got the box and booklet from somebody on eBay for five bucks or something like that. I don't know, but um, it's a neat thing about eBay, right? You can put all your hodgepodge stuff together. Well, not all of it, but some of it. Um, but mostly this is stuff that's, you know, been released. Uh, but there are a few real gems, like, like oh, and Jet Pilot is another unreleased one, like um, Caribbean Wind and Up To Me. Those two are just phenomenal. So that's Biograph. Got a couple more things to show you, and then we're going to call it a day. We're com coming up on 30 minutes here, but it is a lot of stuff, so give myself a break. This, um, I'm, I was never a huge fan of this film, but I saw this set at a record show, a uh, brand new, beautiful, beautiful condition, and it was seven bucks. And so, just to have it in the collection, I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. It's got these postcards and this, um, <laughs> this little uh, motion, uh, one of these. Oh, from the from the um, subterranean homesick blues video, a little flip book, and then it's got another um, book in here, um, which just has a whole bunch of stuff Dylan quotes it looks like and who knows what else lyrics and articles I don't know but um, I did look at it when I bought it initially and this is just nice to have on the shelf it's not um, something I'm gonna watch it's got two discs um, too many times I'll probably watch it one more time in my life maybe um, I'm not like I say it's not my favorite when it comes to Dylan films but what a beautiful set and beautiful shape for seven dollars right two discs and last, I have a couple of select bootlegs I pulled out. 
Um, decades Live, 61 to 94. This is one of those clamshell sets that has 10 CDs and a booklet, and you can find it for 30 bucks or something on, on Amazon or eBay or whatever. And, um, yeah, pretty nice. And the, and the CDs are just these sleeves with the track listing and a picture on the back. I'm not going to show you all of them, or all. I can flip through them real quick. Just boink, boink. There they all are. So, uh, and there's one of the shows with Dylan and Petty in here that's been widely circulated as a bootleg already. One of the better quality ones. A lot of this stuff is really good quality. I think this has the, the Woodstock performance and it might have the unplugged uh, re rehearsal. I'm not sure. I can't remember. And then last, I got this from a guy I buy CDs on from England. Um, and this is all the rare and, and stuff you can't find from the Rolling Thunder review tour. It's got a lot of, of stuff that is just nowhere else. There's also songs that, you know, are pretty common, but there's no, I don't think there's any repeats on this. Oh, that's what this is. This might be every song, best of the best of the Rolling Thunder tour. It might be every song he played on the whole tour. It, that's what it might be. I'm not sure. And it doesn't have a whole lot. It is a silver disc factory press. It has the four discs and then it has a little a little booklet that's it but it's a very nice set and if there's desire on my part or others maybe i'll do a bootleg bob dylan video or videos um but that's it thanks so much for watching please uh, like subscribe and comment i'd love to hear from you and i hope you have a great day thanks